In this lesson, we are going to start off taking a look at uh, the points that I've arranged here on the Cartesian plane. And I asked the question, what do these points have in common? So if we look at the simplest of these points, you might start off by looking at the points A and B. And well, what do they have in common? The x-coordinate is 5, the y-coordinate is 0, the x-coordinate is 0, the y-coordinate is 5. And if you're following along these lessons in order, you might remember in the previous lesson that we actually were looking at the distance from a line to a point. So if I were to draw a point at the origin, which we usually label with capital O, and that would be 0, 0, then what is the distance between the origin and the point A? Well, that's quite obviously 5 units. Between the origin and point B, that's also 5 units. Now what about these other points C, D, and E? Now I've chosen these quite carefully. The coordinates 4, negative 3, negative 4, negative 3, negative 3, 4, they all seem to have something in common with each other which is the each of them has a 3 in it and each of them has a 4 in it. And I've chosen those for a reason as well and again this goes back to our look at the distance between two points the way we discovered or the way that we calculated that distance and came up with a formula was by using the Pythagorean theorem. So the same thing is true here. If I were to draw a line between the origin and point C and form a right angle triangle and if I did all of my calculations correctly I would find the hypotenuse which is the distance would be five units and five units and five units. So the thing that points A, B, C, D, and E all have in common is that they are five units from the origin. And when we start discussing points that are the same number of units from some specified point, in this case the origin, then what we're actually describing is a circle. That is actually the definition of a circle. A circle is the um, connection or the the infinite number of points that are equidistant from a single central point. So that's what we're going to be looking at today which is the equation of a circle specifically the equation of a circle with respect to the origin. So all of the circles we talk about are going to be centered on 0, 0. So once again, definition, a circle is a set of all points that are equidistant from a reference point. That's the center of the circle. And we specifically are going to be looking at circles in standard position, where the center of the circle is at the origin 0, 0. Using these two definitions, and then using what we learned with regards to the distance formula, the distance is equal to x squared plus y squared actually let's it's a little too simple we learned it as x2 minus x1 all squared plus y2 minus y1 all squared square rooted so that's the distance formula we're going to make use of that idea and these definitions in order to come up with the equation of a circle. All right, so what we have here is same distance. So here we, you can see we have a radius of 5. Uh, this is like our point A from the original example. This is our point B, 5, 0, 0, 5. They are obviously 5 units away from the origin. So this circle, by definition, has a radius of 5 and this point even though we don't know the coordinates of this point all we know are they are generically x y the radius of that line must also be or the, the distance of that line segment must also be 5 because it's on the circle that's the definition of a circle any point I could put a point anywhere on the edge of this circle and it must be five units away from the origin that's what makes it a circle so if that's the case then this point if I want to look at the distance between 
the origin, which is 0, 0, and our point, which is x, y. Well, how do I do that in terms of the distance formula? d equals x2 minus x1, all squared, plus y2 minus y1, all squared, and square root that. Well, if we're going to talk about x2s and x1s, we better label them. So my origin is going to be x1, y1. My point, just generic point x, y, is going to be x2, y2. This seems a little odd, labeling the point x, y as x2, y2. But you'll see where that takes us as we complete this next step. The distance is equal to x2, we said we were just going to label as x. x1 is 0, all squared. y2, we're going to just label as y. And y1 is 0, all squared, square rooted. So the distance is equal to x minus 0 is simply x, and then we have to square that, so that's x squared y minus 0 is simply y, but we have to square that, so that's y squared. Take the square root of that. And this would be perfectly fine for the distance. We can go one step further. We actually know what the distance is here. We know the distance is 5 is equal to x squared plus y squared. And taking it one step further, this is fine the way it is, but typically what we now do is we will actually square both sides and write our final form as, well, I'm actually going to leave this side as 5 squared, but now that I square out the square root, I end up with x squared plus y squared. Now, this is actually the same as the Pythagorean theorem. It's just a, it's writing it in another way. And the, the, the way that we're writing it here has an emphasis on the fact that what was this number 5? So this number 5 came from the idea of a radius equal to 5. So first of all, instead of talking about the hypotenuse, now we have brought in this more generic term radius, which applies anywhere on the circle itself. So the radius squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. And the reason why these are generic, why they're just x and y, is that x and y well, they can vary. They can actually take on any number of values. So x and y can vary so long as they satisfy this relationship. And think about that. So what this is saying is that you can pick any value of x and any value of y that you like so long as when x squared and y squared are added together, they end up being equal to the radius squared. We've seen something like this before. We've actually seen this before in the context of uh, horizontal and vertical lines. So if I did 1, 2, 3, and I were to draw a vertical line, let's say I drew that a little bit better, going through 3, this would be the line x equals 3. Because we don't actually care about the y-coordinate here. We just care about the fact that the x-coordinate is always equal to 3. If I were to draw a vertical, or sorry, a horizontal line, y equals 2, I don't care about the x-coordinates so long as the y-coordinate is always 2. This is somewhat similar, if I wrote this in its generic form, r squared equals x squared plus y squared. It's saying I don't actually care what the x and y's are so long as the r value is being 
met is being satisfied. So in this case, that R value is 5. So pick any X and pick any Y you want, so long as once you're done squaring them and adding them, you end up with 5 squared. So let's try working with a couple of those, and see if that makes any sense going forward. So here's our equation of a circle. So a circle with a radius r, the equation of a circle in standard position, normally we write it the other way around, x squared plus y squared equals r squared, but r squared equals x squared plus y squared is equivalent. This is just more of a, this is a communication decision to write it this way. And from there, I give an example. Write the equation of a circle in standard position with the radius equal to 2. Well, that would become x squared plus y squared equals, but instead of r, I want r equal to 2 squared. Now when we're writing it in this form, we will often simplify it. So that becomes x squared plus y squared equals 4. 2 squared is equal to 4. That's it. That's my, that's my equation of a circle in standard position with a radius of 2. For this one, uh, we've spoken in uh, the past in class about the fact that usually mixed fractions or mixed numbers like this don't actually do us a lot of good when we're working in a math class, especially once you're into high school math, more senior math. So I'm going to suggest that you change this into an improper fraction. And the way I do that is I multiply 5 times 3, which is 15, and then I add the 1. So 5 times 3 is 15 plus 1 is 16 over 5. That's my radius. And then I'm going to put that into the equation. x squared plus y squared equals and my radius is 16 over 5 squared. So x squared plus y squared is equal to, and that's going to be 256 over 25. And that is my equation. A little bit more awkward looking, but it's still the equation of a circle in standard position. You don't want to convert this to a decimal in order to do this. Leave it as a fraction and square out both the numerator and the denominator. I guess actually a quick little aside on that one, in case you're wondering. This 16 over 5, all squared, is the same as what you do is, well, there's two ways to think of it. The long way to think of it is that's the same as 16 over 5 multiplied by 16 over 5. That's the definition. When you square something, you multiply it by itself. But 16 times 16 is just 16 squared. 5 times 5 is 5 squared. So when you square a fraction, just square the numerator over the denominator squared, and then you get your final answer. In this case, what is the radius? So now I'm giving you an equation, and I ask you what the radius is. And from that, you want to be able to extract, especially when it's written in such a straightforward form. Well, normally we write our equation of a circle, x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Well, that means r squared must be equal to 49. r must be equal to the square root of 49 because r must be greater than 0. It's a distance. r is always positive. So r is equal to, all right, that's a bad equal sign, r is equal to 7. In this case, we have r squared is equal to 37. So r, now in this case, when we take the square root, we take the square root of 37, there's not much I can do with that. The square root of 37 is not a perfect square as it was over here. So I just leave this in this form. That is my final answer. And the reason I do that is because the square root of 37 is an exact value. 
And I've talked about this before. It's one of the reasons why we leave our answers as fractions. And that means no rounding. And when you take the square root of something, unless it turns out to be a perfect square, you're going to get a decimal with rounding. So from a communication, not even just a communication point of view, from a communication point of view and from a precision point of view, we want exact values in mathematics. Yes, there are times when converting to a decimal and rounding your answer and reporting it that way does make sense, but those times are very specific. Your general rule is going to be you want exact values. Even before you turn something into a decimal, you should represent the exact value, and then only when you've got a good reason, change it over to a decimal value that with some rounding. And that's it for a fairly short lesson on the equation of a circle in standard position.